Hello, it's beast handling time, or rather more specifically, bird handling time. Because we're going to take a look at the bottom path today, starting from the tier 1 Jura Falcon all the way down to the tier 5 Poakai. Don't worry guys, I made sure to check the pronunciation of this before starting. And also, we're playing the new map, Polyphemus. Also made sure to double check. And uh, this is a pretty interesting map because it has uh, two entrances and two exits, which basically overlap each other. And also, there's some shiny water over here. Which, I'll just tell you right now, I believe it's basically, it basically gives 2 to 2 village properties. I'm not gonna go for that, or use water towers, obviously. Because I'm, I need to go for birds. However, for science, I'm just gonna drop one down, and uh, basically the gimmick on this map is that, uh, the eye will close after several rounds, and you have to pay money, increasing amounts of money, similar to Workshop, I assume, to release that plot. Yeah, pretty fascinating stuff. Anyways, the Jura Falcon struggles even to half a wave of round five. Yeah, basically only hits one balloon at a time. If you look at this closely, hard to tell because obviously the trees are in the way. You can remove for $500, but well, I'm not going to do that right now. It's a bit early, but I believe it did one shot a green at one point, so it does at least three of those damage. Probably better for it to, be, you know, be put on strong, I guess, against single targets rather than uh, the lowly red balloons that take a while for it to pop. And also, let me clarify some things. This rectangle here, uh, I wasn't sure what this did initially, but basically what it does is, uh, well, at a lower tier, or a higher tier, basically you have the ability to grab balloons and then move them back to where the rectal is. So it's ideal. That's why it's defaulted to the very front, because obviously uh, you'd rather have, uh, you you'd rather grab something that and move it to the very front, rather than, well, move it close to the exit. I think there's a couple maps where you kind of do that because of the multi-lane feature. Well, I think the way it's coded for this one is that it, it moves it back to the entrance of number one over here. So let me actually put it back in first because that's probably better. We'll go ahead and get a Horned Owl now because Jura Falcon kind of stinks. And yeah, definitely not the greatest display of the Beast Handler's capabilities right now. I think what it's doing is that uh, it's picking up, well, it's popping one balloon to try to pick up. If it pops it though, well, it doesn't pick anything up. It does also seem to do splash damage though because it's only blues, but it's doing six damage at a time. Four damage right there. So yeah, a little splash radius going on. I also notice that the eye closed, and if I click on it, it costs zero dollars to remove, but I would assume, well, once it goes back down again, it'll cost money this time. Not everything can be free forever. Okay, and it's round 16, and it looks like the eye closed again. How much does it cost to remove 500 this time? Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna spend on that. Really, game. Now that means we're gonna struggle, though, because again, we need more than just one single horn owl. Okay, hopefully it's easier to see here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's picking up the uh, Black Loon. As you see, it doesn't have enough layers to uh, pop it anymore. And it moves it right back up to the entrance over there. And if there was a balloon that leaked on the top side, all the way down here, which I can't do right now, because this is right now, and I am struggling mightily. But basically what it would do is it would pick up the uh, Black Loon from Wave 2, or Path 2, and then move it back to the entrance of Path 1 instead, based on where the rectangle is. And also in case you're wondering, no, the Horned Owl cannot pick up Light Balloons. Uh, Zeely will handle that for now. For now, I'm also just going to merge uh, another Horned Owl into the Horned Owl. Just to see if it's any better now at success, success, success. Obviously, it is better, but how much exactly? I want to know. And again, because it, uh, inherits the range of the Merge Tower, I would technically be able to pick up stuff all the way over there. That's why you see the bird through the top left going over there. So if a balloon was strong enough, it would pick it up and push it right back to the entrance. Now, because the Horned Owl can uh, pick up Ceramics, you should be able to see it more clearly uh, over here. Actually, why did I not pick up the Ceramic? That's weird. As you can see in this Sandbox test here, I can still pick up Ceramics because of the uh, Merge Beast Handler's range. So I'm not sure why I was wor wasn't working on that map there. Anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and buy a Golden Eagle now. And there it is. 11 out of 24 power. Yeah, again, still not picking anything up. It's, it's doing damage, but it's not picking up. Let's see how much more damage it does. Okay, so this is actually path two, judging from what I see here. And how much mob damage should fly over? Wait, what? Interesting that it doesn't target the Moab. Like, that is weird, right? Actually, not weird. I guess it's literally just like an ice tower or a glue that doesn't have corrosive wear. It, you literally can't target uh, non-ceramics or non-bloons. I'm just going to get an out buff and uh, let's... It didn't pick anything up. I'm going to just play here and yeah, we, we just died. Huh, okay, maybe this map is just a bit wonky. Here's again some sandbox testing to show you that I don't know what's going on, because it's working fine in sandbox. It's moving the ceramic 
all the way in the corner. And let's say that we had a mold that popped into ceramics. This should move it back to the star. Yeah. Look. That is very strange behavior right? in sandbox versus a real game. But all right. Okay, let me try changing the rectangle. Oh, okay. That, that seemed to be the problem then. I, I don't know why. But I had to reset the rectangle. And now it seems to be uh, dragging stuff back. And uh, yeah, you gotta see. Because it does enough damage to... Pop, it pops wounds while it's traveling, as you see. It picked up the zebra into green, and then it only made it over here before it popped. Okay, guys, the run is saved. Thank goodness. This should be in strong, by the way, I guess, for now. You see, the ceramics have enough HP that the bird is able to uh, carry them all the way. All the way back to the entrance. Okay, I actually kind of figured out what's going wrong here. So, you see, it stopped dragging again. That's because I reset the game. I went out of the game and went back in, and that seems to... Uh, Bug a lot of things out. But it's fine. Again, easy fix. I'm just going to do that. And we're good. Now, I haven't even maxed the power of the Golden Eagle yet. But not gonna lie, I just kind of want to go for the Giant Condor and start uh, knocking back mobs. So, I'm just going to do that. And there we go. We've moved it back to the entrance. And we we popped it midair. I think the... Uh, yeah, other, able to, other towers are able to attack the mob too. So, yeah, that is pretty fascinating stuff. And again, it does a little bit of damage while it's traveling over. And you see, it also has some grouped mob damage. So, we can... Stack two of them on top of each other. And then move it back in the entrance, just like that. Basically a permanent knockback effect on at least a couple of mobs. And it did about 13 damage per tick, from what I'm seeing here correctly. So yeah, decent stall, but I gotta admit that the damage isn't so hot in it. Anyways, yep. Even at a low power, nearly a zero, it can still pick up BFBs and knock them back. Now, from what I remember correctly, if I increase the power of it, the damage doesn't get any better, but it's likely the stall that gets better, as you see Actually, no, it's doing a little more damage. I see 14 per now. But obviously, for just plus one damage, uh, that's not super amazing. But still, better than nothing, I guess. And here's 63, by the way. Holy crap, it just ate up the entire wave and moved it all the way back to the entrance. All right. Maybe I was wrong about it not being great against good amounts of balloons. Well, it's great at knocking it back. But, like, the damage, too. Uh, See? Picks up the Rams and it turns it all the way down to greens. If it was being held for any longer, also I'm dying to the other side of the wave. But as I was saying, if it had any longer of a flight time, it probably would have been able to uh, pop it down to nothing, pretty much. I'm also just going to use the totem to uh, stay alive for wave 2 and uh, hopefully wave 3 here. Yeah, we left it all the way down to the rainbow. That's not really a recombination, but looks like it's enough for this round at least. Oh, uh, I also think I ran to a bug. What is going on? And why is my... Condor picking up mobs and also picking up BFP at the same time. I don't know if you saw there, but it moved it out, out of the track. It seems to be just fine against the BFP over here, but yeah, that was a uh, BFP spawning on the bottom side. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add another beast standard over here, just so I have even more intel radius of being able to pull things back in. So we're now at 48 out of 64, and I might as well just go all the way. So there it is. 64 out of 64 on the giant Condor. And uh, on the BFB, I'm seeing ticks of 17 damage at a time. So it's really not that much stronger compared to uh, a low tier. And also, did you see it there again? Uh, it, it was moving the BFB and popped it along the way while I was traveling to get pick up another balloon. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that I detected it was going to pop it very soon. And then I just went ahead and started picking up the next balloon. And here it is picking up 76. It actually uh, collects some of the balloons first before actually moving it. So I find that pretty fascinating. Also, let's take a look at the uh, eye. It seems to have increased the money, even though I have not used it. So it's different than Workshop. I guess this money amount scales with what part it is in the game. So yeah, pretty hefty price to pay for uh, just <laughs> unlocking one sub again. One measly $200 sub. But obviously it's more valuable if like a Nave Art was down there, for example. And I'll take a look and read the uh, Poakai description. So a legendary Poakai, a bird so large that I can pick up, carry off, and destroy almost any number of balloons of almost any size. And requires three other condors, which we have. And I'm pretty sure it can't, but let me just verify. Yeah, it, it, it cannot hook in a ZMG. And because it can't, it can't even do damage to it, which is the unfortunate part. So with that said, I think it is time. Let's buy it. And there we go. And now we're talking. So this is 150 damage at a time, as I can see over here. And space here, is done. No surprises there. Let's keep going. Now, this is the cheapest tier 5 beast handler by a long shot, so... Uh, I'm not sure how long I expect it to go, but I definitely don't expect it to, I don't know, survive crazy amounts solo, because obviously it seems like it's more of a 
support slash damage option rather than just purely damage, like the other pads are. And yeah, it does enough damage now that it basically turns the uh, uh, mobs of hooks in into ceramics before it even gets to its destination. BFBs come a little bit damaged. But I gotta say, this is so fun on multi-lane maps. You can basically turn a multi-lane map into a single lane map, and hell, even use, uh, like, lanes that aren't even available for that round. Like, for example, Muddy Puddles and Bloody Puddles. You might have seen some Reddit posts already. People, like, <laughs> using lanes that are not in not in action. But are not in action because of the Polokai upgrade. And I think it's time to go for the max now. So here we go. Merge and merge for 132 out of 132. And we should be able to... Uh, uh, pick up TT's too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 91's a bit sketchy. I have it in the first now because, well, I kind of need to pick up the Ceram, so I'll still die. Well, I do have a bit of life buffer, but yeah. The bird do be pretty smart, though. It sensed a lot of Ceram Zero Leakin, so it also swiped out and killed those balloons too before they got through. Very epic. Pokai, very epic. And leaving a first or stronger than back and first to snipe the Ceram's there. There we go. Back again. Oh, I think we're... I think we just leaked that, because... Clearly, that wasn't flying fast enough. For an IC, uh, difference in flight speed between 84 and 132 is not there, so... It's probably increased again in damage and uh, knockback effects. Also, Ceramic. Oof, that was a close one. So, again, we're going to turn round 94 into a single lane map. We just literally took in all BFEs and ZMGs over 94. So, it can solo this round for a cost of, again... Hundred thousand dollars. It's actually four condors is more expensive than one Polkai itself. So yeah. Also ninety five. Basically any round that goes too fast for liking is gonna kill us. Again, I want to try and solo the Polkai, so I'm just gonna buy some support like a Sabo, along with just keeping this still a ragtag defense. Even then, I'm down ninety nine. Yeah, it's not picking stuff up fast enough. The Cerams are far too fast. So, okay, I raise you a Phoenix, and we'll get. A Phoenix at home. Should be good now, I hope. I'll use one Phoenix now. And I'll use the second one right now, too. Still leaking, though. Still leaking. Okay, bad choice because the Phoenix is very inaccurate. And also, it doesn't do a whole lot against late game. Uh, we're going to... Yeah, we literally just... Those Phoenixes are not helping at all, guys. Worthless. We have a much easier time against... Yeah, rounds that just have stronger balloons. So, 98 will definitely be no problem. Even 96 here. Uh, Polkai can do just fine. It's just that when DTs were... And Molos were coming all at once. It was just too much for... Uh, one Brit to handle, but yeah. Totally fine for this one over here. And for 97, I can see the single trigger damage, so... Uh, let's see. I think it's 170. So only 20 damage more that we added from uh, getting uh, three extra of the uh, Giant Condors. Here's 98, though. Not gonna use any Sabots or anything. Pretty sure we can solo. And now for 99, uh, I do need to do some Sabawang, that's for sure. Uh, I see more Serams leaking, so come on. And we are good. And uh, you can't knock back a bat, so I would assume it just doesn't damage it at all. And we need something else for it, right? Yeah. Actually, no, it does damage. It does damage. Okay. That's good to see. I would have been disappointed because I, I assumed it wouldn't because, well, the ZMG didn't work on the Condors. But it is good that we have an ex exception also. I kind of uh, wish I had a bit of intel. One beast center down here so that it would keep attacking. But we'll see if we can clutch up. Again, literally all we gotta do is pop it. And then we basically move the DTs and ZMGs right back up to the front. So anytime now. I am ready to Sabo now. And yeah, we just picked it all up at once. And that is game. Very cool. And I just died to the next round because yeah, there's just too many balloons on round one on one. So before I go, just a couple of quick sandbox tests. I did mention to you earlier that Muddy Puddles can be turned into a truly one lane map just by having the uh, Condor pick up, you know, bulbs on lane 4, and then make it work on lane 1. So definitely some interesting strategies you can do in that regard. And on the map Sanctuary, I actually saw this on Reddit, but you can actually help the mobs by, for example, picking up a Moab. The way this map works, the lanes work, is a bit wonky, but you can move it forward in the map, as you can see. Mulba is now right at the exit. Now, if I want to truly help the BFBs, I would change the Rex Skull and just let it go. Goodbye, BFB. And you've probably already seen this already, but you can create an infinite Rego farm very easily with the Beast Handler. Just have it pick up somewhere near the entrance, a Rego Balloon, 
And then just make sure it's regrowed by the time it gets back into radius. And there you have it. A very easy infinite loop that doesn't require much money to pull off. And just for some more testing here, let's do it. the lowest level Hoakai possible. And this seems to do uh, 130 damage. So again, only a 40 damage difference from 36 to max 132. I'm also curious to see how many fortified ZMGs it can infinitely knock back. And at 20, it did. At 40, it seems it... It also is, is it's holding off. Just take a look. Nothing's getting past that imaginary line over there with 40. We're going to add 10 more for 50. And I think now it's starting to get overwhelmed a little bit. Yeah, so about 40 to 50 is UMG is uh, it can fully handle. That's pretty impressive. Actually, I lied. It actually is creating infinite loop at, at 50. So how about 60? Still seems to be knocking it back. So <laughs> again, impressive. And now that I have 132, you can see how much easier time it has against 60 fortifieds. Yeah, that, that's... Definitely a 90 day difference, and that's exactly what I expected. Was a difference maker. This is 200 fortified ZMGs, by the way, and the verdict is uh, it can pretty much handle almost everything. Yeah, it took about a minute for the fortified ZMGs to finally get overwhelmed. So at least over triple the holding capacity, and that's gonna do it to, for me. If you have anything else to add about this tower that maybe I didn't mention, then let me know in the comments. Otherwise, stick around for some more Beast Hammer action coming very soon. See you later.